Hey up everyone, welcome to the Rugby League History Channel. I hope you're all well. Tonight is going to be another Retro Rugby League season review. And tonight I'm going to be doing the 1995 Canterbury Bankstown side. Or as they were known in that one and only year, the Sydney Bulldogs. Anyways everyone, I'll be getting into that video very shortly. But before I do, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone that subscribed to my channel. Over the last few months and the last few weeks, I'm up to 378 subscribers at the moment. I think I was at 379 earlier today, but then someone unsubscribed. Um, not very happy about that, but I'm uh, just joking. Um, but I'd just like to say thank you to everyone that subscribed to my channel. I'm trying to get the 400 subscribers at the moment. I might get there by the end of November, but I think I'm going to get there before the end of the year. But your support is really appreciated. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone that um, has been there from the start and everyone that's just joined recently. Anyways, getting back to this video. So, um, 1995 was a crackers year for rugby league. Lots of stuff happened on and off the field. And uh, Canterbury finished that year in sixth place. They had 14 wins, 8 losses and a points differential of 116 points. Before the year began... Due to the Super League war starting, there was a lot of clubs panicking. There was clubs trying to make themselves more marketable. So Canterbury decided to rename themselves the Sydney Bulldogs and then they moved all their home matches to Parramatta Stadium. Uh, Belmean did the same thing. They changed their name to the Sydney Tigers. And Eastern Suburbs, after nearly a 100 year in the competition, 90 year in the competition, they changed their name to the Sydney City Roosters. So you had that going on. You also had... The Canterbury Four situation going on, so you had Dean P, Jared McCracken, you had Jim Dimmick, and you had uh, Jason Smith. They signed contracts with the Super League because Canterbury were going to align themselves with the Super League. And then at the last moment, all four of them pulled out of the, their contracts, seeing that it was quote unquote unfair inducement of the contract. So all four of them were fined and demoted by the Canterbury Club. Then Smith, P and Dimmick all decided to fight their way back into the side. McCracken was the only one that didn't do so and he ended up missing out and playing in the 1995 Grand Final victory for Canterbury. But anyway, um, they started off the year quite well. Three wins in a row, they beat North Queensland who were playing in their first ever match in the competition. They beat them 32 points to 16 up at Stockland Stadium. Sorry, Nick from Australia yet again. Seems every video I do, North Queensland's losing somehow. Um, the next game they played against Belneen, Sydney Tigers. They beat them 20 points to 12. And then they played against Eastern Suburbs, Sydney City Roosters. And they beat them 19 points to 12. And then pretty much for the rest of the year, it was kind of win-lose, win-lose. They did string three wins together in the middle of the year. And then towards the back end of the year, between round 21 to the grand final, they won five matches in a row to meet the grand final. And if you include the grand final victory, six wins in a row. Um, along the way, they had some big wins over certain clubs. They had uh, a 42 nil win over the Western Reds, a 46 points to 10 win over South Sydney. And once again, they had a, a massive win. It's actually the third biggest loss in North Queensland's history. They lost... Uh, North Queensland lost 66 points to far against Canterbury at Belmar Oval. So for some reason, they decided to take one match to Belmar Oval in the 1995 season. And they got 18,818 people to watch that game. So Canterbury put on a cricket score against North Queensland there, 66 points to far. Now, the the uh, experiment of taking games to Parramatta Stadium didn't seem to really work for Canterbury. Um they got some really poor crowds out there compared to this one at Belmar Oval. They got 7,000 against Western Reds, 10,000 against North Sydney, 6,000 against Eastern Suburbs, 8,000 against Cronulla, 6,000 against Belmine, 8,000 against Newcastle, 4,000 people against South, and uh, 10,000 people against Auckland. So uh, I think in terms of going out there for crowds and for marketability, it certainly was a failure for Canterbury. Now, um, they finished the year in sixth place. They finished well behind some of the teams above them. Uh, Manly, for instance. Manly finished about 12 points ahead of them, same as Canberra and Brisbane. But in week one of the finals, the elimination final, they played against St George. They beat them 12 points to eight. 
Then they beat Brisbane, 24 points to 10. And uh, that was a massive upset, that. Because Brisbane had finished way higher than them in the competition ladder. And then in the preliminary final, Can Canterbury got their re revenge from last year, from the 1994 grand final defeat against Canberra. They beat Canberra 25 points to 6. And that's a Canberra side that had the likes of Laurie Dealey, Stewart, Mullins, Bradley Clyde, all them. So they got rid of them quite easily. And then in the grand final, they played against a Manly side that only lost two matches the whole year. So they were 20 wins and two losses. Run away minor premiers, best team all year. And they beat them 17 points to four in the grand final. They kept them scoreless. The, their, two, their four points come from the boot of Matthew Ridge. So Canterbury ended up winning their seventh premiership as the Sydney Bulldogs, you can see. Um, it was Terry Lamb's final game in the competition and he decided to come back out of retirement in 1996 but that's a story for a whole other video as to, as to why he did that. Um, the top try scorer for Canterbury in the 1995 season was Daryl Halligan. He got 12 tries and he was also the um, club's leading point scorer with 222 points. Um, so it was it was a weird year. Canterbury weren't expected to win the Premiership. Another stat I should point out is that the four sides that they beat, including Manly in the grand final, they lost to all of those sides in the regular season. And especially with Manly, Manly beat them 26 points to nil during the regular season. So it was a massive upset. I remember watching the grand final. I was only eight year old at the time. I was expecting Manly to win the game. And when Canterbury won, I kind of went... Uh, what, what the fuck just happened here? <laughs> fucking Canterbury won the Premiership. Who would have fucking thought that? But anyways, everyone, that's me. Um, me video for the Sydney Bulldogs Canterbury Bankstown said the 1995 season. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button. If you uh, have a suggestion on another side that I should I should do for the retro season reviews, let me know in the comment section below. And if you have not yet subscribed, make sure that you do so. I'm currently at 378 subscribers trying to get to 400 by the end of the year. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here and hope you all enjoy your Friday tomorrow. I'll catch us all later. Tatty bye.